Yeah, I was never this cool. <laughs> no. Never? When I was this age, yeah. Stone Temple Pilots were big. And Adam Sandler was on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> People were like, oh, he's like that guy who's not as funny as Andy Samberg. Uh, 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 we're uh, old. Hey, welcome to iFanboy, the show where we talk about comic books, uh, and we're the people from iFanboy.com. Yes, good yeah, one. Got right through it. I am Josh. I'm here with... Uh, I'm Connor. Of course. And I'm Ron. There it is. And this week, uh, we're talking about one of our favorite indie comic books, uh, Scott, the Scott Pilgrim series from Oni Press. Um, for those of you who haven't uh, ever heard of this series, uh, now's your chance, because <laughs> it's now possibly one of the best comics out there, and it's probably going to gain a lot more moment, momentum in the future as there are more books coming out and there are movies coming out and things like that. So we thought it would take a good time. There have been four volumes of the book published, and thought it would be a good time to talk about yep. it. Yep. Um, so just real quick kind of overview. Scott Pilgrim is the brainchild of Brian Lee O'Malley, who's a Canadian cartoonist hey. um, from Toronto. <laughs> um, and it's uh, it's published in these little digest-sized formats. Well, Manga-sized. Uh, Manga-sized, if, if you want to call it that. I prefer yeah. digest, but that's just me. Um, no, just because you hate manga. I hate manga. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, it's actually, we'll get to that, though. Yeah. Um, and what happened was is that it, it was published by Oni Press, and it's done in the manga style. It's black and white, um, kind of big eyes, and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it tells the story of Scott Pilgrim, who's a early 20-something slacker type uh, rock star wannabe. And uh, the main plot line is, is uh, he's romancing this girl, Ramona. Yeah. And that the story takes us all through there. I don't want to go too much into it, because as we talk about it, we'll talk more about the... Because there's certain elements of it that... Now... Make it what it is. Now, we don't want to ruin and, this for anybody. And honestly, yeah, we, we couldn't. I mean, right. we can tell you. We can go, so this happens... You're not going to understand that until so you, you really it. get into it and read it, because it's very much an experience of reading. Um, however, like like I said, we're going to be fairly spoiler-free, but we have to talk about some things in order to talk about but it. But that said, we, I, I personally, and I think you guys too, join me, strongly encourage you to read it, because us talking about it Doesn't... no way replicates the experience of reading There is no point in us doing it right now. <laughs> well, we, have to, we have to put a show out. So if you want to send us an email, right, to contact that I can... <laughs> but so, so that gets to a good point. So, so this, it came out in 2004, and we were admittedly late to the game. Um, I was the last of us to read. Not it. very late though. It wasn't like years went by. It we was oh six. I mean, three was out. I mean, the third. I re I bought all three. Yeah, me too. Right, was yeah, it? yeah. Right. So Stay behind. behind. Yeah. We are, we're following the bandwagon. Um, a little bit. Um, and what? Ha and how did we get uh, exposed to it? People wrote into iFanboy um, books we should be reading. Josh put a post up. What should I be reading? Mm -hmm. What am I missing? And people, a lot of people said Scott Pilgrim. So and Josh and I went out and both got. Um, at least the first first one. Yeah. Yes, sir, it was a one and then two, three type of deal. So we go on shopping expeditions together. Yes, we kind of we, skip down the road get, arm in arm like this. And, and then we get khakis. Um, <laughs> that was, that's, that's actually, it's a really good time. <laughs> Ron and I go pants shopping. You and I go comic shopping. That's kind of... Um, and uh, the first the thing we're always talking about I is... I wouldn't tell anybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, sorry. Go on. In a Miata, too. <laughs> Um, I love that Miata. Those make your ass look big. Um, uh, the <laughs> they, thing they we were really talking about up into this book, back on topic, on MySpace page. is um, we've been looking for the next big indie relationship book, right? Yeah, I'm a big fan of, as we've talked in previous shows, uh, and I think you guys are as well, of the, of the, yeah. of the personal uh, drama type stories. The Strangers in Paradise. Strangers in Paradise was the, winding the, down. With, yeah, around the, you the, know. the Waiting Place was a great one that yeah. came out. Um, stylish Blankets, you know, stuff like that. Stylish Vittles. And... It, it, I realized, it was about 2005, 2006, I realized, I'm like, you know, where's the next good relationship book? I really want a good black and white, no superheroes, just people and, and guys and girls and the crazy stuff that happens and love. stuff like that. Yeah. And love. I love so, love. And so, love. So you didn't get that, did you? Well, no, I did. Well, that's so. What we happened was, you no. Know, so what happens is, is that, is that. So they recommend it. You guys read it, and yep. I remember you telling me this is really good. You should check it out. And I remember looking at it, and I'll, 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 I'll eat some crow here, Colin. I'm not reading that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it's Why? manga. It's uh, manga. I'm, 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 you know, like, and then I was just like, no, this is, I was very dismissive. Yep. And then you guys read it, yep. and you're like, no. I remember, I distinctly remember you saying, no, no. You, I was over yep. at your house, and you're like, no, no, you need to read this. And I borrowed it. Yep. And 
I and I, I'll, I remember the night distinctly. I sat in my bed and I was it was like one in the morning and I'm like oh, I'll start reading a couple of pages and I get through. And I couldn't put the fucker down. Well, that's, I couldn't that's, do it. It was just like the first thing great. you learn is when you pick the first one up is you can't stop reading. No, it. you can't. I read almost the entire thing on my subway trip home from the comic store to my house, no. almost the entire book because no. you you're, um, you're just like now each it's, one. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a fast read, but you you fly. The mm-hmm. pacing of the story is such that you fly through yeah. each book, but you yeah. don't feel like you've been ripped off. It's important to note that that it's thick. I mean, yeah. like I don't know the page count. It's t- it's eleven ninety five. Um, so it, it's not it's not like a, you know a, a floppy. They stop pages. Yeah, no. They, yeah, I bring my page numbers, please. Seriously, there's page numbers in the fourth one. Um, so how many pages are there? Two hundred and six. Two hundred. There's about two hundred pages per volume, so yeah. they're thick. Yeah, they're thick. Um, but this they go. Thicker. It goes really, really. It just is intense, and right. it, it flows so easily. And one of the great things about it, I think, is that um, Brian Lee O'Malley's style, because he's writing and drawing it, yeah. and his style at times, like we said, is manga, but at times the art. Can be incredibly detailed or incredibly simple. All right, we should probably get into more about what it's. Well, what let, it is. let's 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 yeah. say the story is Scott Pilgrim. We, uh, we said before he's a he's a in Toronto. He's a musician, but yeah. he doesn't really have a job. He's a he twenty two year old kid basically. He, he yeah. sort of lives with the, his, a roommate. Who in pays like all a the bills. One room apartment. They share, they share a bed. bed. They share a bed. His roommate's gay, but they sleep in the bed. But it's they're just they're just friends, and it's there's all these sort of interesting social distinctions and, and relationships. That are based on really a, a very modern sensibility of how people interact. Yeah, yeah. But, and and one of the things that when I was reading it to go back to me yeah. on the bed is that it was incredibly relatable. Yep. It mm-hmm. was it, I, I'm I'm I was reading this book and I'm thinking you know I know somebody who talks like that yep. and I yeah. know somebody who did something like that and and you know admittedly I you know like I've I've been active in music and all this kind of stuff so it's people who I could relate to and I'm sure there are a lot of people who can relate to it as well. Um, and because of that, like I was about halfway through, and it was like you know now it's like one thirty in the morning. I'm like, this is the book I've been looking for. Well, it's very musically. It's very yeah. music is very much a strong part of video games. Sort of. Video, the, yep. um, yeah. It's but, our culture now. But I want, I want to get to the point. I want so you can get back to your story. Is that he meets a girl named Ramon at a party? Yep. Falls, you know, twenty two year old falls right in love with her first sight. Yeah. And that and then becomes he becomes the quest to date this girl Ramona. Yep. Which is funny because the the. Beginning of that is he starts dating this other girl, Knives Chow, and she's 17. Six, 17. And, and so she's slightly underage. There's a it? great scene where he's with his friends who are all in their 20s. Uh-huh. And they're, and they're well, like, they're all 22. They're, yeah, like, yeah. they're all like they're 26. Early 20s, yeah. yeah. So just out of college, if they went to college, stuff like that. But, and where they're all having dinner, and it's just like someone's like, so she's in high school? <laughs> and like, I've been at that table. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. like, you're dating a high school girl, really? Like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, no, she's great. Now, 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 on top of that, like, you've got. She's a groupie band. Group. These are, no, this is the plot, and some of the, and there's there's interesting characters, and they all have like kind of funny names, and that has a little to do with Brian Lee O'Malley's style. Yeah, and it's whimsical. It's very it's, whimsical. It is, but it's also it's kind of hip. It's kind of funny. It's kind of it's very unique, and it's his voice, right. and 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 that's something that we really can't do a lot of justice to, and right. you have to read it in that way. But it's definitely something that's undeniable about this book. Right. Okay, so Ron, you're in bed. So I'm in bed reading it. He's so, met the girl. So he's going out with knife chow. He meets Ramona. He ditches knives, yeah. and then he decides he's going to pursue Ramona. And um, and he get he finds out that Ramona um, Ramona's a delivery girl. Yeah. Sorry. What's really interesting is that is that we find out something kind of wacky about Ramona and how she you know how she's able to make these deliveries and stuff like that. And there's a little bit of a kind of a head scratching. Oh, what's going on here? And then, then as it gets to, seriously to the last maybe fifteen pages, it comes out that in order for Scott to to date Ramona, he needs to fight and defeat her seven evil uh, former ex-boyfriends. ex-boyfriends. And so, so it's like, okay, he needs to fight her ex-lovers. Okay. And so then the first one pops up, and they kind of fight at the, it's at a gig. He's playing a gig. He plays he plays drums in the band. Right? He plays bass. He yeah, plays bass. bass. Right. I'm sorry. The girl plays drums. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sex bomb bomb, which yeah. before we've talked in a previous show, the best band name ever. Yeah, and the way they say it, yeah. And um, and so they start fighting at the gig, and I'm like, all right, they're fighting. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, all of Scott and his friends just strike a pose like like that, and they start like the dialogue. They start rhyming almost like rhythmically, almost like to song. It's almost like a music and, video. And then then they start shooting fireballs at each other, and it literally. It's now two in the morning, and this book has taken a left turn. Where I'm just like, what the hell is this? It's this like, is, you know, now this has literally become for us a discussion point in comic books. 
it, it took a Scott Pilgrim left turn. Yeah, yes. because it, it did a Scott Pilgrim. It's just when the book you're going, you're going. Okay, I'm going here. Like, you know what? No, I'm gonna go here. And so what happens now is that it's this hybrid of relationships and and people with like this video game angle yeah. with choreography. Well, they're like a living video game. Yeah, and 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 at first I was like, damn it. <laughs> and yeah. then I read the second one. And then I read the third one, and I couldn't stop, and I needed more. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Once you buy the conceit, once yeah. you buy into the world, yeah. you're in. If you yeah. can't buy into it, if, you, if, you, if it doesn't work for you, then you're not going to right. enjoy it. Exactly. But the, the reason why I wanted you to read it so bad is because it was a relationship, because of the music stuff, but I also really wanted to see what your reaction was going to be to the turn. Right. Because we both discussed it before. That we were like, so that took a left turn. Yeah, and, that, and that's what it is. Yeah, so, so that happened. So um, we're going to take a quick break, hear from our sponsors, and then when we come back, we'll talk about why we think this book's really important. What's up, eh? Head over to www.godaddy.com and you can get all your .com needs. You can get like domain names, a, eh? And you can get um, other stuff, a. Eh? And they have 24 hours, 7 day a week support, a. Eh? So yeah, do that, a. Eh? And um, if you enter the coupon code iFanboy, you get 10% off your entire purchase, a. Eh? Go to www.netflix.com slash iFanboy. You can get a two-week free trial. Netflix has like 90 thousand titles a eh? including blu-ray titles and there's no late fees no delivery fees they've got new warehouses so that stuff will be to your house in like a day a eh? yeah so do that how are we going to tell the world that wine library tv is coming to revision three i, I got it i got it Hello and welcome to Dig Nation episode number 187. I'm Kevin Rose. And I'm Alex Albrecht. Dig Nation covers... Ah! What you gonna do on June 23rd when Gary Vaynerchuk and the Vaniacs run wild on you? It's too violent. After reading volumes one through three... Yeah. Um... Basically, I I realized that this book is fantastic, and I want to know when is four coming out. Yeah. Volume four, um, volume four came out uh, the in the late fall, early winter of '07. Yes, um, it was a long wait between volume six and volume uh, volume three and volume four. Yeah, it was um, a year, over a year. And it, the day that volume four came out, I realized something, and I realized that, and this is my opinion. You guys might disagree with me. I realized two things: one, that this you like manga. I love manga. Um, <laughs> um, huh? Read from the back. Um, no, you read it from the front. This one. Um, the two things I realized was one that I think Scott Pilgrim, the Scott Pilgrim series, might be one of the most important series of this decade of comics. I think when we, when in ten years from now, when we're doing the show, <laughs> um, we're gonna look back and we're gonna say, remember when Scott Pilgrim came out and changed yep. everything, that yep. sort of thing. And then the sub to that is that Scott Pilgrim now is the Harry Potter of comics, and I'll explain. I'm sitting in the comic book store the day this came out and watched a stream of people go in the door, to the wall, to the counter, to the chair, and start reading. Yep. Like, people waiting for it. My store sold out of this on Wednesday, the day it came out. Um, and people were literally waiting for it. And when they get it, they devour it. The day it came out, all three of us read it. Yep. And this is like Wednesday night after work, read 200 pages. Because yep. it's just like, it was what we needed and you want to talk about a book that has good crossover potential yeah. like give this book to people who don't read comic books but are yeah. into uh like video games or into manga yeah, music yeah no, or music, music just yeah. any like it's it gets you out of that comic book rut of yeah. of, of it this book, genre I this suppose. book is like nothing else on the shelves mm -hmm. um well i mean it's like manga stuff like that but but i mean but no, the, high, the, the combination of all the elements yeah, nothing of all so, the personalization the culture i think this is going to end up representing a generation i think that there, there could be kids you're you making broad sweeping i am no because i just how much i like it i think there are kids who are like 15 16 who read this and and like like i remember when when we were when we were kids like watching singles like that movie and being like, wow, look, look like that. Like, you know, I uh, know, really dated myself. But like that was something you <laughs> wanted to attain to. So then you've got people who are in the same age group who are reading this that feels like, yes, that's what my life is like. Then you've got people like us who are like, I wish my life was like that. Uh, I'm still like that, <laughs> I, yeah. I was still young. Um, um, but still. I, I will totally agree with you that the, the, re, the fever pitch when 4 came out was unlike oh. anything I've seen yeah. recently. It yeah. was just like everyone was talking about it. Everyone was at the store buying it. Yep. There was stacks and stacks of it just being flying off the shelves at the store where I was at. It's... Yeah. it's and this, everybody wanted to read it and read it the first day and was talking about it. One of the things we talked about with this book is uh, 
what's good about it, yeah. I suppose. And and I think for me, it took me a little while to get my head around the book because I didn't really wasn't really sure what it was trying to be. Right. I think. And then what I realized is that it's actually really on the part of the creator, it's rather effortless. Like he's sort of let it, it seems sort of stream of consciousness to me and, and in a good way. Like there's still a narrative and a plot and it's still going forward, but like I'll put this joke here. I'll put this yeah. little thing here. This reference. It's very and clever in the in visual it's, jokes. It's very and it's very clever in in play on, plays with words mm -hmm. and running jokes. Running like, there jokes. are running jokes that have were started in volume one that still come up in volume right. two, in volume four. And like just the yeah. little stuff like Scott goes to pee. Yeah. And there's the little meter. You know, like the video game life health meter. Yeah. And, yeah. and he gets and like when he he gets like he gets an extra life sometimes. Yeah. He gets hit like that video game thing. Like he's living his life like a video game. Is That's why it's present. very of yeah. the younger generation. It's very right. video games being sort of intertwined with with your life. Right. Why do I feel like Richard Roper? Just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but <laughs> I think it perfectly captures that age to be the 22 out of school, not knowing what the hell you're gonna do, falling in love with every girl you see at a party, and you know like. With take away the whole fantastical element of I think the relationship stuff is very true to life. Oh, yeah. I see a lot of stuff that I was going through at 22 and oh, here. Yeah. Stuff I'm not going to talk about on the show. But um, it, it was, I think that's, that's the best. She said she was 18. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, it's just, I think, take away that stuff, the, the, the human element of it is so strong. Yeah. And, and he has a, he, and you can see, if you go back, the, the progression of the art, is, yeah. is, is if you go back to you've read four, go back to one, you'll be surprised to see how much better the art is. Even though the art was yeah. good in one, the voice is stronger. His writing, his writing is better. And I, and I think that, Confident. and I think yeah. that the way the way the way he's doing storytelling specifically, like he's not afraid to have a have a panel. Like I'm looking at a panel now, and and there's like an arrow indicating movement of that thing. Like like these these are conventions that people really aren't using in comics that much. Yeah. You know, kind of these visual cues that happen. Well, there, there's know? also he's taking he's taking cues from manga comics yeah. as opposed to traditional American right. comics as well. And there's a great running kind of commentary throughout it. You know, in terms of like there'll be little references and like kind of explanations and mm -hmm. things like that. And like it's fun to read. It's a, it's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, to, it's totally fun to read. And it's fun to reread several times in one sitting. <laughs> from experience. Wow. No, but it, it is. I mean, you can sit down and read all four and you just have a blast. It's as good as as good as watching any movie. Um, and Is there a more fun book on those shelves? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. And speaking of like movies, um, like all good comic properties, it's been <laughs> optioned. Um, and we hear that it's been fast tracked. And um, actually, just, actually, from um, our sources, <laughs> which are web pages, uh, um, <laughs> and um, and the news is that uh, Michael Sarah of Arrested Development and super bad fame uh, is is being cast as Scott Pilgrim. What a fun, sexy time he'll have! <laughs> and there, there, some people like Connor. Um, are questioning that. No, question. I'm just saying I don't see it. I need to right. see it. And my take on it is like I I don't see it. But like one of the things we've said about Michael Sarah is that we, we he kind of plays himself in the rest of development. But his shtick is the laid back shtick, where whereas right. Scott Pilgrim was hyperactive. Right. So it's gonna be interesting to see how he. Play. I think he's gonna. I think it's gonna be a good challenge. And, you it's know, like it is it's risk, like it's know. like Jack Nicholson being cast as somebody who's subdued. Right. Huh? I think I, I I think he can do because the thing is the dude. I'm not saying you can't. I just think I've never seen him yeah, do it. Right, the dude yeah. as a kid was super talented, and then right yeah. away he gets typecast sort of into a bunch of things, and yeah. then he's like, "Well, this works for me. I'll do this." If he can break out of his thing a little bit and do a different, you know, he's good. He's got impeccable comic timing for a yeah. kid his age. I mean, amazing. I'm I'm less concerned about the Michael Sarah casting as more as I am how is the video game aspect going to translate to. To the to the script to the film medium. Well, it's being directed by Edgar Wright yep. uh, of Space, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz. That guy's a friggin' genius. He is, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I so think I'm there's a lot of potential, like for it to be a different kind of movie, and I hope that they do it. I hope they don't take the safe route. That's all I'm saying. Well, no, but yeah, what you can do. I mean, the video well, game Hollywood never really easy. takes the safe route. Right. Yeah. Well, you could you could I, I could see like you know kind of like you know Strange in the Fiction had that um, had a lot of graphical mm -hmm. elements. Yeah. I could see a lot yeah. of graphical yeah, elements. Yeah, you know, like, I would love to see. You like, start making like, that the, the the pixelated heart over his head. You know, like well, you, you start know, making yeah. that the the yeah. the screen becomes the 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 interface for the video game at any given time or. I don't know. There's all sorts of stuff yeah. you can do, and I've seen I've seen stuff that Wright does become very uh, uh, smart, <laughs> innovative. Innovative is the word. Yeah. So. Nice. So I'm, turning to a film show. Yeah, yeah, I'm really sad. So so originally there were supposed to be six volumes, but I think it's going to be a seven volumes. I don't know. Um, Brian O'Malley takes his sweet time doing it. I don't even know when five is going to come out yet. Mm -hmm. um, I hope soon, please. Well, the way things are going, we're looking at five, early, you know, next year. Yeah. Uh, which I'm, I'm hoping that we get out of Hogwarts at the end of it because. <laughs> So, Do you think Scott and Hermione will get together? 
<laughs> so, um, so if you're a fan of Scott Pilgrim and want to tell us what you think of it, you can email us at contact.ifanboy.com. You could give us a call at the voicemail line, which is 888-FANBOYS, which is 326-2697. Get your voicemails played on the show or the audio show or the minis or whatever. You want to talk about this show, talk about Scott Pilgrim, you can go to the forums at revision3.com slash ifanboy. While you're there, and if it's a weekday, you can check out our mini show, which is a th you know, one to three minute version of this show. We're talking about all kinds of things every weekday. And finally, you can go to ifanboy.com where you can find out all about all our video shows, our audio podcast, the comic section where you can talk about the comics that you like. Um, it's just a great, fun place to be. It's a fun, <laughs> sexy time. It's so, a um, fun, sexy time. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to reread these all again now because I love this book. Yes, I will! <laughs> I didn't hear Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> your end credit outtake. <laughs>